Now it's time for sound effects. So let's head back over into eCommon. We can collapse music, collapse mute. And now it's time for the next big little section. And this is going to take us through all of the code we've already done to add sound effects to everything. And I found a fun way that I like to do sound effects. I've found it makes it very easy, which is why we renamed all of the sound effects we're using. So all we have to do is right click, add function, and this function will be called SFX. And we will just put this as a category of common. So for sound effects, we're going to need two parameters. What we'll do is first we will right click, add parameter. The first parameter will be sound. This will be a string. And the next, uh, the next parameter, we will right click, add parameter, will be volume. And this will be a number. And then really all we have to do is go add action, audio, play by name instead of play. So before, if you use play, you can pick the sound you want to use. Just like with our levels, we're going to play by name. So the folder will be from sounds. The audio file name is going to just be the parameter of sound because we will be passing that through. We will always have it not looping. The volume we will set to the parameter of vol and the tag on this will be SFX. Done. So now we have our sound set up to play. We just need to tag it now. So let's go ahead and try this out with the menu first. Let's go to eMenu and come down to where we change selection. So let's go ahead and on each of these, on the up press and the down press, we will add a sound effect. So on the down press, add action, functions, common function of sound effect, double click. The sound we want to play will be switch. So inside the quotes, and this needs to be spelled the same way you spelled it along here in the project panel. The volume for switch here, let's go ahead and just make it negative five. And then we can go ahead and drag and copy that down to up. Let's see if that actually works. So this is our first test of it. That works. Sounds a bit loud to me though. So we can actually make this quieter by making this negative now let's make it negative 15 and see if that works. And that sounds good to me. The reason one was louder than the other is because you could see the down press was still negative 5 while the up press was negative 15. I will change them both to negative 15. I think that's a good volume. And one thing I realized we completely forgot to do we will jump back over into eCommon. So here where we're playing the sound effect, we forgot one critical thing. Hit B for a new blank sub event. Double click. System. Is Boolean set. Muted. And we're going to invert it. And then just drag this play audio down here. Because we want to make sure that this only happens if muted is not true. Okay, now we can jump back to menus. So now that we have both of those set, next up will be on selecting enter. So when we select enter, we want to, let's have this only happen when we actually make a selection. So we'll actually have this call in the function. So we will go ahead and on the function, at the very top, add action, functions, sound effect. The sound effect we will be using is select. And let's make a volume of negative 10. Um, these ones are new ones I'm using, so I'm just kind of guessing on them on the volume at the moment. The other sound effects, I pretty much have the volumes that I know what, what they need to be changed to. All right, so let's make our selection. There we go. That's a cute sound. I like it. Perfect. So now we can make our selections, and our menu is making noise. The menu is very simple, though. We are pretty much done with it now. Now it's time to jump back over into eGame. All right, so on eGame, we're going to need sound effects in many different locations. So I'm just going to go down the list of sound effects I have over here, and we will go ahead and add those in. So first up will be the bush. So when the bush dies, we want to play a sound. So we want to have it happen before the bush death. So let's go ahead and add action, function, SFX. We will call bush underscore hit, and this will be at a volume of negative 15. Go ahead and drag this up. Now we can run into level one and see if this actually works. I like to test these as we go along with each of them, otherwise it becomes a nightmare to try and keep track of where you miss something. 
dead. Perfect. That's exactly what we want for that. Luckily, the testing is usually pretty quick. We will now jump back into e. Oh, we will jump back into e game. So Bush is now taken care of. Okay, so now for chest, let's go ahead and drop chest down. We are going to come into where the attack box is overlapping chest. Add action, function, sound effects. We will call this chest. And the volume for this will be negative five. And let's, we're going to move this up to the very top and let's go see what it looks like. So I moved myself quickly over next to the chest so we could just test it without having to go through the whole level. Yay, we did it. Excellent. And now we're on the next level. Okay, we will go back to e-game. We can collapse that down. What is our next sound to use? Let's go ahead and go with reset. So we will go to signs and reset sign. So when we hit a reset sign, we want to play the reset sound. So we will add function, function, sound effects. We will call this reset. The volume on reset will be negative 10. We will drag this up to the top. And let's go ahead and give this one a try. Okay, so let's try the reset sign. Ooh, that was bad. So what happened there is it actually played the sound effect multiple times. So as we can see here, that happened. It played it looks like every tick while the attack box was overlapping everything. So let's go ahead and actually just pull this out. We will go into B, double click, trigger once while true. And we can go ahead and just pull all of these items down into that. And that should fix that. That's how we want that to work. Perfect. Okay, so next up, we'll be hitting the rocks. So let's go ahead and close everything down. We will open up our move rocks folder, and we want to have when the attack box is overlapping a move rock. We actually want to set this up to when it can move. So if we're doing it on else, we don't want to actually have anything happen. So what we want to actually have happen is the move rock makes a sound when it can move. So we will go into attack box, is overlapping move rock and move wrap is not move rock is not moving the attack box is right we'll come down here it checks its grid add action sound effects and the sound will be rock hit rock underscore hit and the volume on that will be a negative 20. so let's check that it's only going to work if we hit a rock going right so let's give it a try That's the sound I'm looking for. Perfect, so we can add that into to each direction. So I will drag that down into left, down into right, or up, and lastly into down. Okay, we can go ahead and collapse that. So now if we hit a rock from any direction, we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and test that out here on level three. If we hit the rock up, great. We don't have any effect for our sword swing, but while we're in the rocks, let's go ahead, go back to e-game, and let's go to when they stop. So, if the move rock, now we're going to drop down, so we were here if we hit the move rock. So now we're going to go down to where the move rock is already moving. And instead of placing it where it's moving, we want to place it when it stops, where we, have a, where we have the screen shake calls here. So we'll add action, function, sound effects. We will call this rock underscore stop, and the volume will be negative 20. So we're going to drag that up next to our screen shake, and we will drag that down into the other four screen shakes we have as well. And again, let's go ahead and test that real fast. Well, that's not what we wanted either. So again, that's happening multiple times. So what we need to do is actually add in a trigger once while true. So we can just do that for each one pretty quickly. Um, there could be a, there could probably be a better way to do this, but for now, this is just the best way I have to do it and make sure it all happens correctly. Trigger once while true. And what I like to do is since this is already here, 
before I drop all of this in, I find it's easier to just grab this whole thing and drag it down into each of these else statements by holding control, and that way I can copy it down to each of them. Then all I have to do is take all of the content from the else statement and just drag it down. All the content, drag it down. All the content, drag it down. All the content, and we drag it down. And that's all we need to do for that. So let's go ahead and check that and make sure that works correctly. That's better. That's the sound I want. Perfect. Okay, so now the rock hitting sound is there. Now the last two are uh, pretty simple ones. First one is sword swing. So we can go into player attack and we're going to come in and we're going to play this sound when we are attacking. So when we hit animation frame one and we're attacking, we will play the sound. So let's go ahead and add action, function, sound effects. We will call it sword and its volume will be negative 10. Save. Let's go ahead and see if we hear the sound. Okay, so we're running into the same problem here. We need that to trigger once only as well. Let's go ahead and hit B for a new blank sub event. Double click, system, trigger once while true. And we can go ahead and just drag that function into that and we should be good. I don't think we have to make any other changes. Let's see. Nope. We can do that in all directions. It all works out fine. There we go. And last but not least, we have his play his steps. I like to have little stepping sounds for my players as they move around, even though you can't hear it super well. But I find it just adds a little bit if you actually start listening to it. I, I like to do it. That's why we're doing it. So if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Uh, we can do this under player movement. Go ahead, select the group, hit B for a new blank sub event. Okay, so we're going to double click. We are going to go down to player art, and we are going to check its instance variable for anim. So compare instance variable anim. If anim is equal to run, then we want to have on every frame that the foot hits the ground, it play a step. So we need to see what frames those are. Let's go ahead and check our objects. We will check player art. Let's go down to one of our running animations and take a look. So it looks like he is on the ground on zero. Looks like zero and three. Okay. So on zero and three, the player is fully on the ground. We will say if the player art is, if anim is run, B, double click, and we will compare its frame. So player art, compare frame. If it's equal to zero, but we want to have both zero or three. So we're going to copy and paste that, double click and make this three. And we want to make this an or statement. So we'll hit Y. So now we have it saying if the player art is on frame zero or three, we will do something. B for a new blank sub event, double click, system, trigger once while true. And then we're going to add an action, which is function, sound effect. The sound will be step and the volume will be negative 15. So let's go ahead and see if we can actually hear this. It might be kind of subtle. There we go. We got a little thud. Dun, 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 dun. It just gives a little more life to the movement. And with that, everybody, I think we are actually finished with our whole game here. So let's go ahead and really take a look at what we've got. So we will start on menu. And I guess I will have a loader on here with my loader.